What's going on Port fans, welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be reviewing Port Adelaide's round 17, I think it is, victory over GWS by 55 points in what was a very interesting game of football at the Adelaide Oval and just in front of just over 24,000 people. Uh, a full credit to the fans turning up to watch a game of football that uh, is almost a dead rubber, but um, the turn of events that have happened in the past couple of days in AFL footy have certainly suggested it wasn't a dead rubber and proved to be more important than some people may think. So let's get into the review and find out exactly what happened. A 55-point win was the job that Port Adelaide got done in the end. A game of football that Dev never really saw a GWS fight back uh, and controlled by Port right from the beginning uh, with basically what was the Connor Rosie show and uh, he proved to be absolutely pivotal in certain places across the ground. It started with his first goal, his lead-up mark, and set shot goal, and which then turned into a 60 meter bomb in his next goal. A, a great tackle in the second quarter for a set shot from about 45, which led to his third, and then the icing on the cake with a nice outside of the foot snap going towards goal in the last quarter. It was a magnificent performance, four goals, 26 touches for uh, Connor Rosie, and something that uh, we've been come into known over the last few weeks which has been um, some, some absolutely sensational performances he's put out and he's really thriving into his own bit at the moment which is fantastic to see and I think that's the main takeaway from um, from GWS's game last night is the fact that Connor Rosie absolutely dominated them they could not stop him at all his, his movement around the ball his, his disposal efficiency has gone through the roof of late um, and his decision making is absolutely sensational so to see him thriving has sort of Led to him spending full time in the midfield, which I think is a massive positive um, overall. And it's why he's thriving. It's it's sort of made him one of the better midfielders in the comp. And I think he's he's definitely going to be up there in that conversation in terms of form over the last six weeks or so, and in particular what he's developed into. And um, that's probably the main um, positive for Port is Connor Rosie is thriving and, and becoming um, a standout midfielder. Another positive has been um, the outlook of Sam Pau Pepper. I think he's been absolutely fantastic and dominant again. His pressure around the football. And um, I was speaking about Connor Rosie before. That play on the outside wing where Connie Rosie attacked the ball and, and the body was hit, it definitely hurt. But then you see the follow-up two seconds later and Pau Pepper's absolutely bulldozing through one of the GWS boys and putting him over the line and actually putting him in his place. And I thought that was absolutely hilarious, to be honest. Um, and it showed a bit of the grit in the fight that, you know, the club's not laying down in the situation that it's in. And I, was, I mentioned these players that they're standing out individually, and that's where this season's sort of leading towards is positive reinforcement of player development and, and them taking the next step in their careers. And we've seen that from Todd Marshall, Pau Pepper, Connor Rosie, and I think the likes of Kane Farrell coming back from his knee injury as, as well. And, and the young development, you know, Jace Berg wants to come into the side, and I think he's played two really good solid games of footy. and it's one of those things now that you see these development in the young players. Jackson Mead's starting to keep his place in the side. And I think it's just marvellous to see where they're leading to. And, and, and it's still exciting for the club to have that future aspect. And I think in a game where it sort of looked like it went nothing to either team's season, you see what happens in the Gold Coast uh, Richmond game. All of a sudden, the season turns on its head. You look at the fixture for us personally, and Port fans will know that it's a tough fixture, but we're arguably one of the better teams in the comp at the moment, sitting 12th. That's how disappointing the season's been so far, but that's how good our form is. You know, we've been beating sides. We should have beaten Fremantle, I believe, and, and you know, we've beaten a Sydney, we've beaten a Gold Coast, should have beaten Richmond probably, and you just see how the development of that six weeks has been. The two losses that we've had since the bye have been a combined 18 points. Um, and, and, and that's something that's really positive in an aspect where we should be beating them. And yes, trying to play top eight footy and, and being that we've, we've stood up in those aspects, but haven't got quite got those, um, close games. And the game against Melbourne next week in Darwin proves to be even more interesting now because they've come off a loss to Geelong and, it's, it's games like these that blow the season wide open and Port Adelaide needed to make up percentage and whilst I still think there was a little bit more in the tank for our scoreboard, we know in the second half, which I'm going to tell you, Port fans, was the most, was one of the most boring second half of footy I've seen in quite some time. 
Um, Gito has literally parked the bus. We know how good our defensive unit is. It was literally going end to end. It was circle work. It was just boring to watch. And if it wasn't for the last few goals that Port Adelaide kicked in that last quarter, <laughs> it would have been a very, very sad second half. And uh, I think overall, the first half proved critical, uh, critical. And it was pivotal to see us take the foot and put it down a little bit more. And I would have liked maybe another two, three goals, get that percentage up a bit more because we know how tough the games are. But other than that, you don't take too much away. You know, Charlie Dixon's been fantastic. I think um, you know Todd Marshall got his couple of goals. I thought Boak and Gray were serviceable. I don't think they're hitting their strides at the moment, but they definitely were still doing their thing. And I think... If you've got Connor Rosie, Jackson Mead, these young kids coming through. Butters was awesome as well from his return from injury. I don't think Ray and Boak have to do as much, and, and it's just a matter of getting the team over the line um, overall. And with, with that, it becomes pivotal now into next week. And I think this GWS game gives us a bit of confidence into doing that. You know, The Giants were in some form. They've come over to, an, to a very, very cold Adelaide Oval, um, and I didn't personally get to go due to um, sickness and prior events that I already had um, been booked in. So I'll be looking at the AFL and putting in my fixture request for next year. But yeah, I think for the for the fans that turned up, it was a game of football that we proved ourselves to smash a team that's similar um, in terms of position wise, but proving our class. And I think um, you know, I just want to reiterate the fact that. I can't believe we've got a sniff. Why? Why do we have a sniff? I don't understand how we've got a potential uh, chance at finals. It's going to be tough still. There's definitely still a question mark. But the season isn't quite done yet. That's probably pretty much the review, Port fans. Um, I don't have too much else to add about the game. I think overall, it's a solid win. It's a percentage-boosting kind of win, but it's also pivotal that we win these games of football when we come up against the big task of Melbourne, Geelong, Collingwood and Richmond. That's our next four games. The season is right there. You win all four. Oh my God. But we just got to wait and see one week at a time. And I love that Ken Inkley's uh, reiterating that we're going to stay in the moment. We only play who we do next week, and that's Melbourne and Darwin next Sunday, other. Thanks for watching, Port fans. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content coming your way across the rest of the season. Check out Pairs on a Pod, uh, the podcast that every Port fan seems to be jumping at the moment. So please, if you haven't already, check that out and uh, check out our previous interviews with some star players across the past. But overall, jump on board. My name's Anthony, and as always, can't Connor Rosie.